Title 42 is just one of literally dozens of Band-Aid policies that administrations, both Republican and Democrat, have applied to the border since 9-11. That history is traced in the article uh, I wrote that you referred to. So, you know, under the Trump administration, which was really desperate to curtail the number of people requesting asylum, Stephen Miller, who was President Trump's chief immigration advisor, he scoured um, federal law and looking for ways that the president could bypass Congress and shut the border down himself. I, I documented this in a front page story in The New York Times. Um, he finds Title 42. He tries to put it in place initially based on small public health issues, outbreaks of things like lice and the flu, and White House lawyers tell him, no, you know, this isn't serious enough to invoke this public health rule. And so when the coronavirus pandemic comes around, it actually offers an opportunity to Miller. The Trump administration pushes forward Title 42 kind of under the guise of a public health concern, but it was really just an attempt to minimize the number of people seeking asylum. But here's the problem with banded solutions that cut off access to a portion of our immigration system, but not the entire thing. When Title 42 cut off access to asylum, illegal crossings rose really dramatically. They had been very low because prior to Title 42, most people crossing the border were turning themselves over to border agents and requesting asylum. So illegal crossings close. Now we have Title 42 lifting, which affords some people access to asylum again, but the Biden administration attempting to replace it with yet new Band-Aid solutions um, that I think, as you mentioned, are both being challenged in court and I think are just not going to meaningfully address the much more powerful factors, those that draw people to the United States, uh, are, are very significant labor shortages, um, American employers who are frankly desperate to hire migrants, and then on the other side of the border, factors like climate change, instability, violence, um, severe hunger that are pushing people to the United States. These minimal policies really are no match. Um, but in terms of the quiet that we're seeing on the border today, it's very typical for a, a surge in migration to occur right before a transition in administration or a change in policy. Those moments offer smuggling organizations the opportunity to you know, basically start a fire sale and say, hey, everybody, you need to take our services because things are changing. And then the change takes place, numbers go down. Um, this is very much typical and not surprising. And so that's kind of why I'm trying to take the opportunity to draw the conversation to our bigger immigration issues yeah and not just the border on a day-to-day -day basis. It's so important that you just explained it the way you did and laid it out the way you did because clearly this is a, an issue that's been grappling, you know, multiple administrations, both Republican and Democrat, and it's notable that uh, the difference it makes when a candidate is seeking the presidency as opposed to when they're actually in office because then candidate Biden was really campaigning harshly against Title 42, and yet here we are uh, two years into his administration and finally, you see this program lifted. I do want to play sound from the president, who uh, is under no uh, illusions that this this process is going to be without chaos. He addressed it and said as much just earlier before this expiration. Let's listen. So, but it remains to be seen. It's going to be chaotic for a while. And as an example, as I raised in the meeting, when they said, well, we're going to cut and no spending more money, what the hell happens? If you cut, you're going to cut people at the border? You're going to cut agents at the border? We, know, we need more at the border, not less at the border. So you're right to describe these policies are real, as really Band-Aids. And what needs to happen is Congress needs to get its act together and, and on a bipartisan basis really enact significant change here. Without that, once again, we are seeing this president and administration taking unilateral action. Can you just explain for our viewers the difference? Because there have been criticism from both Republicans and, and Democrats uh, about this policy that has been introduced by President Biden looking quite similar to the policies that had been enacted by his predecessor. Absolutely. So I think one of the things that the Trump administration created, you know, former President Trump was so focused on immigration and immigration policy that he sort of made it seem to the American public like the president sets immigration laws, which of course 
is not true. So what presidents can do is issue memos, issue regulations that chisel out different ways in which the existing set of laws are applied. Uh, many times, you know, presidents, presidents will attempt to go too far, and that's what the ACLU, which is challenging the Biden administration in court now, contends. It's the same thing that they argued against ways in which the Trump administration eroded the asylum system. So the baseline, an important thing for people to understand is that the United States immigration laws are very outdated. They have not been updated in decades, and they don't address the current geopolitical realities. They don't address the circumstances that are drawing people to the United States, nor do they address those pull factors I mentioned earlier. You know, the need for migrants who, who you know, ideally would arrive in the United States in a safe and legal way.